Lee here and to share this with you. During quarantine, I decided to create some painting classes and I went about it like from back when I was younger and the things that I wish I had when I was learning to paint. I wanted to be able to like sit down and watch somebody from start to finish. And so that's essentially what these classes are. So here's what all it includes. A paints crash course video that talks to you about the different types of paint, color mixing videos that teach you how to mix colors. There are 10 separate painting courses and each one is broken into three segments, a beginning, middle, and an end. There's also free bonus material that's available to you through my website. If you want, I have a lot of extra resources for you, printables, um, tips um, on how to make your artwork better, tips on choosing your color palette, all that kind of stuff. You can receive that on my website if you go to www.samanthawood.art and go up to the top where it says art class. You can click that and then um, fill out the little form there for email and the request for um, that extra bonus information and I'll email that to you. And you can find me on Instagram, on Facebook, and then also on TikTok. On Instagram especially, I would love for you um, to share what you're painting and to tag me um, so that I can see what you are up to. You can also check out what kind of art I'm creating and what I've been up to while you're there. I'd love to see um, what you're creating and find out if these courses have been helpful to you. So anyways, we will go ahead now and get started on this first lesson. Oh, one last thing. This little intro is gonna be the same on every single video, so you can just skip it um, or pick up. Like if you don't need the color mixing videos, just pick up where you're interested um, along the way. I'll be releasing this content on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday of each week for the next few months until everything has been released. So anyways, I'm excited that you're here and I hope to see you over on Instagram or Facebook too. All right, so we are ready today for part two. We're gonna kind of look at things a little bit closer, focus a little bit more on detail, and then just build on what we already started um, in part one. So let's go ahead and get busy. Okay, so now that everything is like in place, I'm gonna go in to those like lighter areas of the reflections and pay a lot more attention to like the different variations of light and dark. So I'm looking for lighter lines, darker areas, and kind of going in and putting those in place. ahead now and adding in like the lighter areas um, on the darker part of the glasses so you know first I was doing like in the lighter reflections but now I'm kind of just skipping around and looking for areas that are light on the other parts of the glasses and I've mixed the color I'm using now is just a little bit darker than the color I used in the lightest part of the glasses The top right um, of the glasses I'm going in now and kind of like enhancing the colors brightening them up brightening them up a little bit and just um, kind of breaking up the different tones because there's like a lighter area and then there's going to be a darker area and so I'm just kind of making that difference um, between there and kind of adding that second coat so that the paint looks more solid You 
you can see at the top of the glasses like what a difference that made just adding that little bit of color variation and so now I'm going into like the bottom half of the lens and I'm going to do the exact same thing. Just look for darker areas and lighter areas and get that second coat on there. Now that I've got the right lens done, I'm going on over to the left lens and kind of repeating that same process of finding the darks and the lights. One thing that's helpful to me with like mixing colors and getting my darks and lights is like if I have like a middle magenta color and then I want to make it more purple, I'll use what I have and just add like a little bit of purple at a time. Um, then you can see on the canvas I just added a little bit of blue because I wanted it to be more of a bluish purple. So it's kind of like just keep working with those colors that you have on your, pad on your palette and kind of like tweak them a little bit. Add a little bit more of this, a little bit more of that until you get it where you want. And then feel free when you get it on the canvas, if you realize that the tone isn't exactly what you want, try adding like a little drop of another color and blending in to see if that makes the difference that you need. I'm going in now and adding um, even more detail to like the lighter reflection areas and I'm using more of like that bluish purple color. Um, I'm thinking I'm wanting my glasses to kind of have more of a overall purple tone. Um, so I'm going to go in now and kind of work around and add those darker areas and a little bit more purple in. Feel free, like on yours, like be creative. Like if you tend to like blue more, try adding some blue tones. If you want them to be really like pink or an orangey pink, try those tones because really as long as you have your lights in the correct place and the darks in the correct place, it's gonna work out regardless of what colors you use. paying really close attention now like to the different lines and areas sometimes where you you'll see where I just put that bluish purple line against that kind of like gold reflection line kind of check your lines for that and see if like one side of them is lighter and one side is darker um, that's a detail that can really help to make things stand out so I'm just kind of going back and like double checking and adding those small details at this point I'm also skipping around just using that same color anywhere that it can be applicable and that's like a huge um, time saver so when you're using a certain color kind of check around for other areas um, within your painting that you can use it and you'll save yourself a lot of time by going ahead and, and doing that. When I just tried adding it up there at the top right it wasn't quite dark enough so I went on and added some more purple to it. Um, and I'm kind of blending that out. So it's just a good way to work. You know, use that same color all around and then when you need to make it darker. You also notice I'm like smoothing out with my finger. That's something that I do. Um, sometimes those brush strokes, I don't want them there. Sometimes I just really want a smooth finish. And so I'll use my fingers to kind of blend things out. I'm going in now and kind of like inspecting the lines that go around the edges of the glasses um, looking for little lines that I haven't included yet or little details that are missing and kind of getting those in place.
You'll notice I keep coming back and adding like different tones in the reflections. Um, that's one thing that I think can really um, kind of take your artwork to another level is the more tones and variations of a color you use, um, the more interesting it becomes. Um, and so I really like kind of going back as I have different colors and variations mixed and kind of adding it in. And I'm doing it really softly, um, but it just kind of even adds more dimension to that area. My shadows underneath the sunglasses are still a bit um, rougher than I would like. So now I'm going to kind of go in and work on getting um, those in place. And notice that your shadows have like darker and lighter areas and sometimes even different tones. Um, so kind of go in and add your colors to that and blend them out and get that the way that you want it. I started noticing that overall my picture is just a lot of middle tones um, there's no like really dark darks um, one thing when I was in college they would always remind us to have like the lightest of lights and the darkest of darks and of course you don't have to always do that but sometimes if you're looking at your artwork and you're kind of struggling and and wanting it to like stand out or pop out a little bit more um, you can notice how just adding that thin black line around the frames really made it stand out and seem so much more realistic. Um, so I'm just kind of going around now and adding those little dark lines in the places that I can see those. Now that I've got like the darkest colors, the blacks in place, I've mixed kind of like a, it's between a medium and a dark brown because there are some places that are still dark but not quite as dark. So I'm looking for those areas now and skipping around and getting those in place. So while I'm working on the dark areas, I'm noticing that where like the arms of the sunglasses cross behind there, that there's a, you know, that shadow that runs underneath. And so I'm using kind of like a dark purple there. Um, and then I'm using it also to kind of go back into different places um, and add those dark tones within my sunglasses. So that's, you know, another dark you can use. It doesn't always have to be like black and brown. Um, a lot of times purple and blue and gray are other good dark options to use. Okay, so there's that little bottom part of the sunglass arm that sticks out from behind the lenses and I'm just using my artistic license right now to decide that I want to make it like that reddish pink because it stands out more because it's not behind the lens and so since I have like those warmer, brighter colors at the top, that kind of brings that color down and so that's why I decided to like put that color there. And so now I'm going back, like since I got that little end piece um, in there, I'm going back and painting like the lines back over it so that it looks like the lens, you know, is on top of it or in front of it. Um, that's kind of one of those things you have to keep an eye on as you work through your painting. Sometimes you'll cover up certain parts 
um, just kind of make sure that you always kind of go back and revisit and kind of check those things and make sure that the right things or are, are lines are overlapping and making the parts in the back look like they're actually in the back. I feel like the arms on the sunglasses, like behind the reflections, kind of needed some work. So I've kind of mixed a little bit more orange in, like with that tannish color that I had. And I'm kind of going back and adding that and brightening that area up just a little bit. So depending on how realistic you want your sunglasses to be, um, pay attention to those details around the lenses, those lines, because there's a lot of lighter areas um, that have like darker lines around them and it really changes at the way the light hits as it goes around the lens of the sunglass. So I'm kind of going back in, smoothing those things out, double checking them, making sure that I've got the lightest spots where the light is shining on them and then the darker areas, you know, where the the light's not reflecting on the sunglasses. So now I'm going to go in on that right lens just above the arm and just kind of add a little bit brighter of a tone so it kind of stands out a bit more. But then that's pretty much going to wrap it up for today and I will just come back next time and add those tiny details to finish it up. Okay, so I know at this point your sunglasses are starting to look really good and they are coming to life. They are getting that nice reflective quality. And now we're just going to come in for that third time and like fine tune it and just really make them look sharp. Mm -hmm.